you'll recall that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So literally any physical thing you've ever seen before is matter. And this is kind of a review of some basic information that you probably learned a long time ago. Matter can exist as, as solids, liquids, and gases. And in this case, we have water here, ice. So solid water is an ice. Uh, solid water is called ice, liquid water. And then there is some gaseous water, water that has moved into the gas phase. Even at low temperatures, water can move into the gas phase, um, which it, if you do it by heating it up, we would call steam. So matter can exist in all three states. There's a fourth state of matter um, called aqueous, which comes up in chemistry, which means dissolved in water. So solids, in solids, the particles are uh, relatively close together. In liquids, they're somewhat further apart, allowing for the free flowing nature of a liquid. Said another way, the liquid takes the shape of the container, but it has a definite volume whereas a solid has its own shape and also has a definite volume. A gas, where the molecules are much farther apart, both takes the shape of the container and has an, um, and has an indefinite volume. So if you make the contain container bigger, the gas will expand to fill uh, the container. So these are the three states of matter. And again, aqueous, which means dissolved in water. It's important to note that in all of these cases, unless these materials are at absolute zero, which there is very, very cold, far colder than would ever commonly occur, um, this, these molecules are constantly in motion. You may not think about it, but the solid on the desk or whatever in front of you, the molecules inside of that desk are moving. The molecules of liquids are moving and the molecules of gases are moving. One example of this is, for example, if you were to heat up a, a piece of metal or touch a hot piece of metal, it burns you. And the reason for this is the molecules inside the solid are vibrating very fast. If they come into contact with, say, one's hand, they impart energy into the molecules in that person's skin and it knocks them out of alignment. That knocking out of alignment we commonly refer to as a burn. And then your body heals by replacing it with molecules that are again in the perfect alignment that your body wants to be in. So those are some states of matter. I'm just going to skip uh, through these slides. But we can further uh, classify matter into pure substances and um, mixtures. Pure substances can only be split apart by chemical methods, well as mi whereas mixtures can, mixtures can be separated uh, by physical means. So if we start to uh, make a flowchart here, and on the top of our flowchart, we have all matter. We can further subcategorize this into pure substances and, on the other side, mixtures. So pure substances can only be um, separated by doing chemistry, i.e. changing one thing, one element or compound, into another. You're not going to change an element into another element, but you can change an element into a compound. For example, you could change hydrogen, H2, into water, H2O. Or mixtures, which is a mixture of two or more elements or compounds. In nature, because of a concept called entropy, which you'll talk about later on, mixtures tend to dominate. So almost everything is a mixture. There are very few pure substances. And in fact, human beings who want to make pure substances almost always have to put energy in in order to make uh, substances pure. So we have pure substances and mixtures. First, we're going to talk about some um, pure substances, which can be sub subdivided into elements, um, which are found on the periodic table. You'll recall possibly from a previous, sorry about that, wrong one, a uh, previous uh, lecture that we looked at the periodic table. So there's approximately 110 elements on this periodic table. And if an element is by itself, such as lithium by itself, or um, oxygen by itself, which happens to be diatomic O2, which we'll talk about more later, these are elements. So that is one type of um, pure compound. Another type of pure 
substance is called a compound. And this is two or more elements kind of chemically bonded to each other. So hydrogen is bonded to oxygen. Sodium is bonded to chloride. Or caffeine, which contains carbons and oxygens and nitrogens and hydrogens. And this is the structure of caffeine here. Here you can see it chemically, and here it's the ball and stick model, but both of these are caffeine. So elements, again, are found on the periodic table, and compounds are two or more elements uh, that have come together. So if we continue our flowchart, pure substances can be thought of as two different things. Elements, such as iron, or hydrogen, which happens to be diatomic, or lithium, or any of the other ones, or compounds, which is two or more elements mixed together, which would be something like um, water, or sodium chloride, or any of the infinite number of compounds that there are. So all matter can be subcategorized into pure substances, and pure substances can be subcategorized into elements and compounds. So next, we want to talk about mixtures. What about mixtures? Mixtures can be physically separated and are not chemically combined. So for example, if you have a mixture of water and salt, salt water, that would be a mixture because there's not you haven't chemically combined the salt and the water add the water. So that is a mixture. And again, in nature, almost everything is a mixture. So they're a combination of more than one substance, and they can either be homogeneous or homogeneous or heterogeneous. So let's look at the two differences. Homogeneous or homogeneous mixture mixtures have uniform composition. So Kool-Aid, you can't see the sugar or the dye or the water separately here. You can just see one uniform composition, which is a homogeneous mixture. Coffee, brass, which is actually a solid, but it's a mixture of um, copper and zinc, is another example of a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixtures, on the other hand, have visible components. So, for example, you can see a cookie here. You can clearly see either Hershey's Kiss and the cookie part. So, this is an example of a heterogeneous mixture. Muddy water. You can clearly see the mud and the water. Or sandy water is probably a better example because it's easier to visually distinguish them. Um, raisin bran, which has raisin and flakes and this kind of stuff. And soil, which has rocks in it and, you know, a non-uniform composition. So we have these two types of mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures, which have uniform composition. And heterogeneous mixtures, which have um, a non-uniform composition throughout. So we can further subcategorize our mixtures into homogeneous or homogeneous or heterogeneous. So these are the two ways we can subcategorize our mixtures as um, stated above. If you'd like to see this uh, flowchart in a little bit more uh, nice form that you could possibly revert back to when you're doing your homework, um, you can see it here. So pure sub matter is subcategorized into pure substances and mixtures. Uh, pure substances have elements, which are things that are found on the periodic table, or compounds, which are mixtures of two or more elements. Mixtures have homogeneous mixtures like Kool-Aid or brass, or heterogeneous like mixtures like oil and water, soil, sand and water. The last thing we need to talk about is separating these um, heterogeneous mixtures. How would one separate these heterogeneous mixtures or homogeneous mixtures? Well, if you have a heterogeneous mixture like sand and water, you can simply filter it. So you could filter this off like you might do with coffee in the morning, or that's a heterogeneous mixture. You have coffee grounds and water. If you had sand and water, you filter it. The water, the clear liquid, will pass through the filter, and the sand will get stuck on the filter. So you can separate in that way. However, if you have a homogeneous mixture like salt and water, a filter will not separate it. 
In this case, if you had a homogeneous mixture like um, salt and water, you might use distillation. So if you have salt water here in the flask and you heat it up, the water will boil because it has a relatively low boiling point compared to the salt, and the salt will not. The salt will stay in this flask if the burner isn't warm enough to boil salt. So we start to boil the water. What happens? The water forms steam, and the steam warms all of this glass. Eventually, it'll start to warm all of this glass over time. And then eventually, what will happen is it'll start to hit the glass here. This water is being cooled with a condenser. This part of the glass, I should say, is being cooled with a condenser. So you have cold water from like a sink coming in and cold water going out. And this condenser is relatively cool. Just like how in the summertime, if you have a glass of water, water condenses on the outside of the glass on a hot, humid day. Um, it's a very similar idea here. You have hot water, steam, and you have this relatively cool water, which is just tap, cold tap water running through this. The water condenses in this part of the flask. And you'll notice that this is set up in such a way that gravity will allow the water to, once it condenses and reforms a liquid, to drip to the other side. And you can collect it in a flask here. When you're done, your salt will all be in this container and your water will all be in this container. So if you wanted to set, separate a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture, you might use distillation versus if you have a heterogeneous mixture, you might use filtration. Finally, a more modern way of separating salt water is something called reverse osmosis. And RO systems um, are used in chemistry buildings all the time, and they can also be used uh, for the large scale of production of drinking water in a country where, for example, it's like a desert, but they're near the ocean. So you need to uh, turn the salt water from the ocean into pure water that can be drank uh, by people. And this is a reverse osmosis system. I'm not going to get into great detail of how it works uh, right now, uh, but we will talk about this later in the course. Essentially, what you have is salt water plus pressure and a semi-permeable membrane leads to pure water. And again, we'll talk about this later on in the course. So the take home message from this section is learning to classify our matter into pure substances, mixtures, elements, compounds, homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures.